Greetings. One of the most familiar sights on the roads, the good old Mini. It's been around for 30 odd years now, so I guess we can judge it to have been a success. But it's always had a problem. It's just too big. In Japan, you are not allowed to buy what you or I would call a normal car unless you can prove that you have somewhere to park it. If you can't, you're only allowed to buy what they call kaijidosha. In English, a car so small it can fit inside a cornflake packet. It must be less than 55 inches wide, its engine must be smaller than 660 cc, and that's very small, and it must be physically incapable of exceeding 87 miles an hour. But there's nothing in the law that says how fast these cars are allowed to accelerate, which is where this comes in. It may look like motorised pop music, but this car is a cross between a dinky car and another dinky car that's slightly bigger than the first one, and a jet fighter. It's the Mitsubishi Dangan, Japanese for bullet, and it meets all the rules and regulations so you can buy one in Tokyo, even if you don't have anywhere to park it. So how come then that it will thrash a Golf GTI in a traffic light Grand Prix? And what about that huge spoiler? And how come the rev counter reads to 9,000 RPM? And how come it's such enormous fun? To find out, you need to look under the bonnet. Now it has a three-cylinder engine, so it sticks to the letter of the law completely. But the spirit? No, not really. You see, each of those cylinders has five valves. It has a turbocharger. It has an intercooler. It is an outrage. It is also outclassed by the Daihatsu Myra EFI XX TR Turbo Avanzato here. Now, like the Dangan, you can get four adults in there and a wee bit of shopping. It also has a multi-valve turbocharged engine, but it goes much, much further than that. Now, normally on a film shoot, we can be guaranteed of rain, but on this occasion, I brought my own. Because, you see, the Myra has automatic windscreen wipers. If I pour water onto this sensor here, they wipe automatically. <laughs> Unbelievable. It also has automatic headlamps. There's a sensor here, if I cover it up to simulate darkness, the lights come on. It also has air conditioning and a sound system that can knock people's houses down. What we have here then is the world's littlest limo, the best pocket rocket of them all, a little red boosted rooster. The thing about driving a car like this is you feel very socially responsible because it's small, it's an environmentally friendly and it's economical. You should be able to do more than 60 mpg. But at the same time you feel like a complete hooligan because you want to drive so fast all the time. There really is something here for everyone. It's environmentally sound, yet it's more fun to drive than even the most exotic supercar. It's as practical as any hatchback, yet it's so minute it can completely revolutionise the way you go shopping. Vacuum cleaner. Terrific handling. Uh, no thank you. In Japan, you can even have a version of this astonishing little machine which has four wheel drive and four wheel steering. Now, you might imagine that it would represent just about the ultimate of what you can do with a micro car. But you'd be wrong, because you'd be reckoning without the Honda Beat. 
No roof this time and no turbo either, just a straight 12-valve, three-cylinder engine. But would you just look where they've put it? What we have here then is a mid-engine two-seater convertible, which in Japan costs £7,000, around about a tenth of what Ferrari charged for that other mid-engine two-seater convertible, the Mondial. Now you're probably thinking all about quartz and pint pots. How is this six foot five inch person going to fit in a one inch car? Simple. What's more, this six foot five inch person really likes this one inch car. I adore this tiger skin upholstery. The instrument binnacle is superb and the stereo is something else. Odd, isn't it, that a car born out of a need for common sense has become a fashion accessory? And let's face it, this whole miniaturisation thing has become very trendy these days. Having a camera bigger than a sugar lump is as bad as wearing flares. And if your mobile telephone is any bigger than a peanut, it's as bad as going down to the disco in a stripy tank top. But do we actually need cars that are this small? Well, look at it this way. If everyone in Britain had one, the length of every traffic jam in the land would be halved overnight.